is a quick video for Q's workshop to explain what I was uh, talking about. He's making a, a collar chuck, and I just wanted to show a, a much simpler way to do it uh, by just using the taper of the spindle and then turning a two inch piece of uh, stock or 20 or 50 mil um, to about five, six inches long. Right. Yeah, so a little over five inches long. Um, I always put a drill and tap, like a, a half 20 uh, thread in there, uh, just to pull it in when I do it. You tap it in place, pull it in. But once you put it in and machine it, you basically machine it concentric to the bore in that position. And to keep that position, all I do is I have a mark on my spindle right there. Right there, that way I can see it easy. And, uh, and then I just mark that. And I usually end up with uh, uh, two to four tenths on the taper itself. On this, if I run an indicator on this taper, and uh, it's bored, it's bored through. And if something goes wrong, where all of a sudden I'm not getting good run out on this, I could just take a skim coat. Uh, this is the uh, ER College uh, 12, uh, uh, six, wait, 16 degrees. Yeah, 16 degrees, so eight, 8 degrees on each side. And uh, that's why I add a lot of thread here. And there's a lot of meat here. So I could probably use this for the rest of my life. Uh, because I haven't had to clean up the taper yet. And then, uh, depending on the accuracy of college, you'll get between one and two thousandths. And, and there you go. And then I did it. I have them up here on the headstock. Now when I turn the... Morse taper five. I usually make a bunch of them, so because I already had it, uh, you know, the compound rest set up. So that's what it looks like before I do anything to it. And uh, I have three extras because I'm I don't have ER 11, 25, or 40. So I made one for 5C, and uh, obviously it's got a, a disc collar in it. And it's got the mark on there, ER20, ER16, and R8. And a lot of people would say, why, why would you use R8? Uh, and the, the reason is because I have a full set of uh, R8 collets for my mill. So why not have the extra option? If I'm, if I'm chasing tenths and I'm, I have something that I, I was, uh, was previously machined and I have no choice, I could do that. Another thing about these is that the... They actually fit the straight down my. Oh, I got it over here on my surface plate. So you'll know, forgive my uh, rusty chucks. We got a hell of a moisture pattern here. So I could actually chuck this in the four jaw if I if I need um, if I need to dial it in a little bit better than the um, than the spindle will give me with without cutting the taper. So, but cutting the taper is pretty, a pretty simple process. Um, I forget what these are offhand. Um, oh, I don't know. You have to Google it. But yeah, they're pretty, pretty simple tapers. The hardest taper is obviously the Morse Taper 5. And the tapers on these are, as long as your taper is shallow where the top hits first, there is tolerance. Like, it's like... I want to say like a half a minute, so, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, uh, a half a degree, so 30 minutes of, uh, of deviation, and a lot of the collet chucks I've checked are actually like that, um, they don't match exactly what the collet is, and that's because they want to, they want to use the end as the register, so the back isn't taking it all, and then the front is out here with the ability to move, so when you pull it in, you want the top of the taper to hit first. If you can't get the taper exact, but that that's pretty much it. And then uh, the other important thing is, like I said, is make sure you mark it because where it was cut on that, uh, my spindle has has two to three tenths of uh, of run out, and I, I honestly think that's in the in the grind of the spindle itself. And I've been considering regrinding this Morse taper five in here. Um, but yeah, two to three tenths on the, on the spindle run out. I end up with about four tenths once I take this out and put it back in. 
on that taper nose and then depending on the collet you could have uh, an extra tenth to uh, you know two thousandths depending on the you know if you get some some crummy uh, collets and I've had better luck with 5C I'm sure there's uh, plenty of arguments saying that you could get ex insane accuracy out of both but uh, for me the uh, similar quality collets have 5C has always yielded better for me but the uh, the fact that 5C collets you need about a zillion of them uh, to cover all the sizes and, and you know ER 40 you need about 20 and you cover every size that you can fit in the in the thing uh, so that's it also with your uh, with your headstock taper whether it's a four and a half a Morse taper five a Morse taper three uh, usually your compound compound rests on both lathes are built to uh, make every taper on the machine so uh, you should be able to make a Morse taper five no problem and I usually like for my tailstock is Morse taper three and I have up here a bunch of things that I made with uh, Morse taper three so I use like the, this for the annular cutters is a straight centering bit and then uh, obviously for live centers uh, what else you got in here here's one like I said sometimes you just make an extra one because you got the material so that's an extra one I don't know what that's gonna be maybe a dial follower but I've never really needed one but yeah that, that's a uh, that's about it uh, hopefully hopefully this helps somebody in uh, you know it's a it's a much easier route than building a whole uh, chuck back and a, a chuck face and buying one of those uh, plates or whatever really all you need is is a nut and the uh, and the collets you know because it's uh, a pretty standard thread like this is off the top of my head I, I don't even know maybe m40 by uh, 1.5 I think the I think they're all 1.5 uh, come to think of it um, yeah the ER16 is uh, 22 by 1.5 and I think the ER20 is like 28 by 1.5 or something but easy thread every machine should be able to do it and then all the tapers are pretty simple and uh, uh, turning the tapers is a pretty valuable uh, skill on the um, on the lathe and then uh, since I have a, a D14 cam lock I just tape these up. I'm gonna make some uh, 3D print some plugs, but I just haven't gotten on, gotten around to it. I gotta get on uh, Fusion 360 and make up some plugs or something that I could just put in and, pl and plug out something that's not metal. But if it flies out of there, a 2,000 RPM um, doesn't kill me. But yeah, that's, that's about it. You could get easily thousands or less uh, run out with just that setup. And if you need to adjust it. All you gotta do is recut the taper. And then, you know, you probably don't even need to touch the threads because when a ER collet goes in there, they don't even go in, you know, that much. Like, you still got plenty of plenty of space before you even have to start cutting the threads. And you're probably, if you take, you know, five dow off of that, you're probably only moving the taper, taper down a couple thousand, so. So there you go. Um, the other thing is, you just got to make sure with your lathe that uh, right now I got a threading tool in there, but I have like a metal, the metal guard right there. There's nothing behind it, so I could cut it out and get closer. But I can't machine up to my nose without like a long, without a long tool. So you just got to make sure that's a possibility. And also because it stops way out there, when I use this, I could barely. I can barely center drill with these. Like I get to, I get to like right there with the tailstock because of the uh, it bumping up against there. That's it.